I just, you know what, I've got this head coaching blood in me right now, and uh, it's not something I want to, uh, being in charge, being in control, it's not something I wanted to get away from. Nine months ago, Scott Arneal walked away from Columbus, Ohio, relieved of his responsibility overseeing 23 guys, all trying their best to win for a franchise mired in fiscal problems and off-the-ice politics. The 50-year-old head coach still shouldered a heavy burden. He knew he wasn't done yet, and he tasked himself with doing something about it. I had a lot of time from the time now, obviously, uh, almost nine months, sorry, yeah, nine months since I got fired in January 8th of 2012, which is printed in the back of my head. Uh, you know what, I had a, a real tough stretch, a couple of months trying to figure out where I was going next and what I'd done wrong. And uh, you know what, a, uh, I talked to an awful lot of good peers, a lot of good uh, people with, uh, that I respect an awful lot that um, have kind of got me out of that, but it's been the best learning curve of all. What could have sent the veteran coach reeling instead turned into an opportunity for reflection and a chance to make himself a better hockey coach. I got to watch hockey from as an outsider's perspective, um, you know, so it's been great for me. Obviously, the winning, the, the getting the NHL, having success uh, along the way, that helps your confidence. That helps you uh, to believe in what you're doing. It also, you know, kind of matures you for what's coming next. The getting fired part, to me, really helped. It helped me more so than any of those years. It really uh, made me look a little bit closer, made me dig a little bit deeper. Um, like I said, I've made an awful lot of phone calls. Uh, I've watched a lot of hockey, and I'd like to think that it's it's just it's one of those steps. It's got knocked back a peg, and then you got to move forward a couple. So, um, you know what? It's just a learning curve, and I think that uh, you know I've got told by a couple people you're not officially a coach until you get fired, and so hopefully that's behind me for a while. But um, like I said, it uh, at first uh, I'd never been through anything like that. It's like getting punched in the gut. Um, as a player, you can get traded, uh, but you're going to somebody that wants you. Uh, getting fired, that's all. that was a whole different situation. So I'd like to say I'm in my happy place now, and I've put that all behind me, and I am. I'm so excited about getting, uh, getting hockey started. It turns out Scott's happy place was in Chicago. To the net, to the net, to the net. Bucks to the net, come on. Get him there. Coming to the American Hockey League as a head coach, uh, it's the next stepping stone. Sometimes you have to step back to step forward, and that's what's happening with Scotty O'Neill. He coached in the American Hockey League and went to Columbus, uh, ended up leaving Columbus. And uh, you, you can make a decision whether you want to be an assistant coach at the NHL level or be a head coach at the American League level and try to make that step as a head coach. And, and that's what Scotty Arneal decided to do is uh, come here. Uh, he wants, he's got one focus and that is to win a championship for the Chicago Wolves. Let's go, let's go. Need some traffic, somebody's got to be on the goalie. Come on, he can't see those shots. Men who have battled for Arneal in the past, there is often a united way of describing his approach to coaching. I would, I would say he's intense. Yeah, <laughs> he could. Uh, yeah, I mean, he can be scary at times with the intensity, and uh, you know. But that all comes from just wanting to win, wanting the best from his players and, and his staff, uh, and that doesn't that doesn't include just the coaches. That's everybody uh, within the organization. That's what I heard a little bit. Uh, I haven't seen any of it yet, but uh, I heard that he's intense but fair, and that's what I like. I think that's true. I think there is a little bit of that in me. I think that uh, uh, you mellow a little bit. Like you, I remember when I first took uh, took on the head coaching job, I was very animated. That was uh, as the years you get a little bit older, maybe stuff you don't react quite as drastically or as quick as your fuse gets a little longer and. I think being in the NHL, I learned a little bit too about timing of all that. So, um, but I would say I have passion. I, I mean, it's still probably the player in me. Um, you know, I think that I get excited. That it's, it's almost like being a player still. It's as close as possibly you could come. Uh, but um, you know, I'd like to think that it's controlled. I think I like to. You know, there's times and a place for uh, sort of that animation. <laughs> As for Arneal, 
His recipe for success has one very important ingredient. I'm a stickler for detail, um, and, I'm a, and, it, and that goes to my trainers, it goes to my assistant coaches, my players, myself. Um, I think when you have the details down and you have the little things in, in, uh, in place, uh, it makes everything easy. It makes the games easy, it makes the you know, practices run smooth. Um, so I'll be repetitive a lot about the way we go about our business, and I will lay those things out to the players or to my staff. Um, how we want to do our daily business or how we want to run our practices or how we want to prepare for games and it's their attention to detail is what is going to make me happy. Uh. <laughs> I mean it's fun to see somebody that cares behind the bench so I'm sure if fans will see that he cares for the team and he wants the team to win, so I, I can't see why the, the fans wouldn't embrace uh, Scott as coach. Obviously, I've heard a lot of great stuff about him, and uh, I talked a little bit to, to Corey Schneider about him and, and, and about their relationship, and they had a really good relationship, and uh, he's, he just seemed to be a really nice guy. There's two things. You've got to step lightly at first. Obviously, you know, as I go around the room, as I go around the, the arenas, as I go around, uh, you know, meeting players, meeting the staff, the organization. I have ways that I want to do things, but it's how I, I don't want to be a, a dictator coming in here and all of a sudden I'm changing everything. There's a lot of history in this team, and a lot of history in this organization. And the Wolves always, to me, had a swagger. They always had, you know, that they, there's lots of times uh, when you can win hockey games because the teams are intimidated before the game ever even starts. And I mean from the fact that you're always winning, that you always have an upper hand, and um, it's what the Wolves have already done, always done. And I think that, like you said, the last four years, there's been a lot of change. Obviously, the NHL affiliate has changed. Um, you know, there's a lot of been a lot of coaching changes. Um, you know, so hopefully we can bring in some stability. Uh, but we want to get that swagger back. You know, we want to get that. You know, that where we can be one of the again, one of the teams that is feared all the time before the game even even starts, because it can. It can win you games long before the, the puck is ever dropped.